My name is Dr. Chung and I'd like to demonstrate a few tricks with the otoscope. Uh, I find that a lot of uh, medical students and even physicians, in my opinion, uh, don't use this uh, scope optimally. So I want to show you some tricks. The, mo the number one thing that I want to show is a lot of people don't use the pneumatoscope portion uh, partly because they weren't trained and also because they can't seem to get a good seal on the ear. So when you're using this scope, typically people have these in the office. The problem is they do not fit the ear canal. So when you use this little pump here, because there's no seal, you can't get the eardrum to move unless you really press very hard. So the trick, first of all, is to get a good seal. Now you can buy one of these expensive. They cost like $10, $15 a piece. Uh, the problem with these is that they have only it's sort of a still a one-size-fits-all and for example this one if the ear canal is uh, wider than this you will not make a good seal you can make a seal using a simple any old adhesive tape that you find preferably adhesive tape uh, that's not paper but paper will work also it's just not quite as good and what I do is I make it about approximately this wide and we just, um, actually in this case, I'm gonna make it this wide. And what I do is I put it about a quarter of an inch proximal to the tip and just wrap it around. And if you wanna come up close to that, that's fine. And it literally takes me about as long as this, maybe a little shorter because I'm, I'm kind of going slow. And what you end up doing is basically creating a bevel like that other device, except if you see carefully, it's actually thicker and, um, and it's soft. Okay, so this will fit right into the ear. I like to uh, hold the scope like this, not like this, like this. This is a pet peeve of mine because one of the advantages of this, and I guess it has to come to do with my old days when I used to play billiards, you can hold and keep things perfectly steady, okay? All right? And then you can tug on the ear, and as you know, to straighten out the ear canal, you need, to, in adults, you need to pull in that direction. In kids, you turn in this direction, because um, kids' ear, Ear canals are more horizontal. Adults are more in that direction. In that direction, so you got to pull this one, and then you do that. Now, so then you can get in. We'll turn this on, and you place it in. And what happens is now I got a good seal, and the patient will tell you it doesn't hurt. You can actually press kind of firmly. Then you hold this in this hand, and what you're going to do is when you're visualizing, you're just going to kind of go like this. That's all you need to do. If you have a good seal and you do this, you will hurt the patient and maybe, I've never blown an eardrum, but I guess you theoretically could damage the eardrum if you do this kind of action. So I've seen people do this kind of action, but without a good seal, it won't damage it, but it's not very effective. So when you do this, you tug, and then you just, uh, just show the bulb here. You just do this kind of action, okay? Now, now you can come back. So when you do this, when you have this kind of little action like that, the eardrum will flutter in reaction to it, okay? And I've tried to make, I don't have expensive equipment, but I try to make a video of that with our iPhone, so you'll see that in a second. So that's all it is. You just go like this, you stabilize, once again, your instrument, pull back, and then start, once you visualize the eardrums, yeah, hers goes in and out very easily and it doesn't hurt, okay? That's it.